I'm here at Todd A.O. Hollywood to talk to author and Foley artist Vanessa Ament. So I'm here with Vanessa. How have you been? I'm just peachy. I am surprised at the interviews that we've been having. Um, I always ask the question, how did you get started? And almost everybody's response is, well, I fell into it backwards or a buddy of a buddy, you know, asked me if I could help him out with a project. Mm -hmm. How did you get started? The same way. I was asked to come and interview and audition to replace um, voices for a film. So that would be ADR. Uh, for a film that had been shot in Mexico with Mexican actors and their accents were too thick and I could do a slight Spanish accent because I spoke Spanish. So I had been brought in by a woman by the name of Kim Fowler who unfortunately is no longer with us but who was a very talented Foley artist and um, I auditioned and in the second take had perfect sync. And uh, they basically said, do you want to learn Foley little girl to back up Kim? when there were too many shows going on at once. And so I initially did Dallas and um, worked with this great old guy by the name of Dwayne Hensel and he was really kind to me because I really didn't know what I was doing even though they had been told I'd done this before and it wasn't really true. Um, but I didn't want to blow that, you know, because it's hard for me to fake that. I say, oh no, I've never done this before, I, you know. So the very first thing I had to do was drop a remote control. It was supposed to blow up something for this Dallas. It was sh a couple of episodes after Who Shot JR. And I did it. And I think I didn't do it horribly, but I felt pretty much like a fraud because I don't like faking anything. Uh, I got through the day. I remember going home absolutely exhausted and thinking, they will never want to work with me again. But they did. They called me back. And I... I I think it was a time when sound was expanding and Foley was expanding and they needed people and they liked me and there was one guy in particular who's now really important at um, Sony, Jimmy Honore. Jimmy pretty much kind of pushed forward and helped me get um, a lot of the Lorimar TV shows. So I did fall into it because I basically was an actor and a singer and I thought this was going to be something I did in between acting and singing jobs. I never was interested in film. and it keeps, at, like, like they say in Godfather 3, um, you know, I keep trying to get out and they pull me back in. That's kind of how it's been. Even though there have been times I've said, okay, I'm going to go off and I'm going to go do this now. But it keeps coming back. So I finally figured out, okay, I need to stick with this and let it be what it's going to be. And so now I write about it and I teach about it and I want to document the stories about the people. So I did fall into it backwards. It wasn't at all what I thought I was going to do. And now I love film. I'm studying film. And it's become a mission for me to get out there the word about what this business is like in Post Sound and who we are and what we do and what it's really about. You've literally walked uh, in the footsteps of a lot of actors and, you know, performing fully. Do you have any good tips or tricks that you could share with us for perhaps walking barefoot on broken glass? Mm. Mm -hmm. Have you had that opportunity Why to do that? Why come up with that? Hmm, let me think. Ah, well, first I have to tell you that that's the ultimate Foley joke. The ultimate Foley joke is when we get cue sheets, well, they don't do cue sheets anymore, but back in the old days, we'd say, oh, they're probably going to want us to walk barefoot on broken glass. Well, then I actually had to do, and it was for Die Hard, and I'm sure you knew that, which is why you fed me this line. <laughs> me? Bru me? I don't know. What? Feed me? you a line? Moi? Um, so the Bruce Willis character, at one point they shoot out all of the windows, and he's barefoot because he took his shoes off on the plane to exercise and get the tension out. This with his toes. With his, right. Yes. So he's barefoot, and um, Hans, of course, knows this, so he has them shoot out the windows and all this glass, and we had to do all the window breaks, so, you know, we also did the shards for that. So the way that I did it was I walked barefoot for him all the way through, and then on a separate track in a pit, we had little tiny pieces of glass, and I worked them with some really um, thin gloves on my hands, not to cut my hands, and just sweetened with some occasional impacts on the glass so that I could control how much of the glass would come through because obviously you don't really make that much noise walking in it just to get a sense of it. But the way I walked him too would have been more carefully because you know it was very uncomfortable and I think at one point he's pulling glass out of his 
foot. So, um, so I got to walk the ultimate Foley joke. And so now it's not such a joke anymore. <laughs> so if they say now, I bet you they're going to ask us to walk on broken glass with our bare feet. They're going to say, well, ask Vanessa. Is there any common mistakes that you see beginning Foley artists make? Yes. And first, let me start with footsteps. They will flat foot because they don't understand the way the footfall works. Then they'll over articulate the footfall. And it's in between. And then the next mistake that will happen in the learning curve, it's not really a mistake, it's just the normal learning curve that everyone will go through, is that they will um, have every footstep sound exactly the same. But no surface is exactly the same when you walk forward. There's a little unevenness, or one part of the surface is a little more worn, or one foot walks a little differently, or a particular pair of shoes you walk a little differently in. So the trick is to not sound mechanical, to sound as natural as possible, and pay attention, you start to get a feel. But I think when people start out, they overthink it. And that's pretty natural for all of us because you're walking standing in one place unless you're doing some sort of avant-garde innovative way of trying to do Foley by actually walking on a surface in motion with sound following you. But that isn't happening all that much because it's hard to control the sound. It's hard to get the venue to do that. And most Foley artists just stay in one place when they're walking, but we've learned a lot of techniques to make it sound like we're going forward or we're going backward or we're going upstairs or downstairs or walking on gravel or all the things you do. You start training your ear. And, and the interesting thing is that when you first start out walking, you are overthinking it. But after a while, you're not even thinking about that part. You're actually just moving with the person and actually feeling like that person. It's really, that's when it becomes fun. I used to call it Zen Foley, which sounds a little trivial, but really you start to embody who the person is. And then it becomes really interesting because you can think about subtleties and you're not doing the mechanics. It takes time. And I think um, all beginners want to get there fast, especially the millennial generation who's used to having that immediate gratification of technology working really quickly for you. And the biggest thing that I can say is slow down and let yourself ta have time for the learning curve because it's necessary. So you've worked on some big films, a mm -hmm. lot of films that I grew up watching. <laughs> um, what, what, oh, thank you. So now we know that I'm ancient. I, well, they know that you're <laughs> slightly older than me. I'm ancient. <laughs> what, uh, what, what's one of your favorite projects that you got a chance to work on? You know, the one that comes to mind over and over again, well, there are two that come to mind for different reasons. A goofy movie I loved working on. Um, I did not perform the Foley for that. I was editing the Foley for it because I was also working on another project at the time. Joan Rowe did the Foley for it, but I, I cued it and shot it, or she, she shot it and then I cut it. That was a fun project because Kevin Lima, the director, was just a pleasure to work with. I also did, um, headed up the group ADR for it with him. He was such a joy to work with and it was such a delightful film and it was animation and these, these animation people are always fun. What's harder to work with, uh, footsteps or props? Most people who start with Foley find the props are easier for them to start with because they handle these kinds of things in real life. They handle things and they make these things happen with their hands. And they're not used to trying to walk in sync with someone, specifically staying in one spot and thinking about the way the footfall goes and thinking about the way the scuffs might be or what direction or pivoting. So normally, that is what people enjoy doing first and it's easier for them and then they develop an ability to walk characters. However, it's the opposite for me. Because I've been a dancer, the footsteps were very easy for me to get and really easy for me to fall into and, and walk the way people walked and to start seeing that someone like Charles Durning, for example, who might have be heavier, didn't walk heavy. He kind of had a walk, a very fast, light, scuffy walk. Um, and that was easier for me. And the props were a little harder for me to get a handle on. And I remember Joan Rowe telling me the same thing, that the footsteps were much easier for her and she had a harder time with the props. But most people, I think, find the props easier to start with. So what I would say to anybody wanting to do this is be okay with knowing that one of them will be easier and give yourself time to get equally good at the other. Don't think that there's something wrong with you because you get how to do one and not the other because every single person I know has started out being strong at one and then can get strong at the other and it's okay.
that's the important thing. You will have a natural tendency to be better at one than the other. And I've seen both. But I tend to see more of the students I've worked with or the young people I've worked with start doing the props more easily and get grounded in that more and then start coming up with amazingly creative ideas and the footsteps take them a little longer. Thanks so much for coming out. It's been a lot of fun and I appreciate all your insight into Foley. Well, thank you and thank you so much for asking me to do this because it's always fun to talk about it and to talk with someone who I know really enjoys it, cares about it, and to share anything I can with anyone who might be watching this. So, thank you. We'll do this again soon. Okay. Take one. Go ahead, wait, wait. <laughs> hey, it's free.